Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy, here to talk yet again about three-way switch wiring. In this video, we're going to look at how to use two smart switches for three-way switch wiring inside SmartThings. Stay tuned. This video is part of a series on three-way smart switch wiring solutions. If you're not sure what that is, on my website, DIYSmartHomeGuy.com, you'll find an exhaustive how-to section for three-way switches. As always, working with electrical wiring is dangerous. If you are not comfortable with any of these instructions, please call a qualified electrician in your area. Of course you'd call them in your area. Where, where else would you call them? I'm going to cover three configurations. Configuration one uses two smart on-off switches. Configuration two uses two smart dimmers. And configuration three uses an on-off switch to control a smart dimmer. Config three assumes that the dimmer is in the primary or load controlling position and the on off switch is used only to turn the lights on and off. The switches are wired identically in all three examples, but there are some little magic tricks that you may need to know along the way. So let's get rolling into the six tons of fun and wiring that switch. The three way light switch on my lab wall is wired using method one from my website. That is the line comes into the first wall box and the load goes out of the second wall box always make sure you check your original wiring method before you dive into this. Since our original wiring was method one, we'll be using this wiring from solution F1. Notice that with this option, the Z-Wave switch in wall box two only has a line and neutral attached. The smart switch in box one is doing all of the work. This solution puts the line and the red traveler wire in the line side of the smart switch. Let's hook her up. First, let's get that black line wire into the switch. And as always, make sure you get that lug very snug. I'm using what was one of the traveler wires and switching it to the load wire per the diagram. Notice I've marked that black traveler with the yellow tape to differentiate it from the line wire. And then we just pop in that neutral wire. Once everything's tightened down, give everything a good tug to make sure that they won't pop out when you're jamming it into that wall box and temporarily secure the switch while we install the other add-on switch. Combine the other end of the black traveler, which again, I've marked with yellow tape to avoid confusion, with the load wire. The red wire is the line in and the white is the neutral. Install those. Tighten good and tack in the wall switch like we did on the other side. Now it's time to restore power and test the primary switch to make sure it controls the light. The secondary switch should have no effect at this time, but it's still a good idea to make sure that the LED is lit to ensure that it's properly powered. Configuration one uses two smart on-off switches to control a three-way circuit. I'm gonna cover two options, both of which are pretty simple to set up. Option one assumes that you have at least one scene capable switch like Zoos, Inavelli, or Homeseer on-off switches, to name a few. In this example, I'm going to use a Zoos Zen 21 as my primary or load controlling switch and a Zen 26 as a secondary or remote switch. Now that we have those switches installed, let's get into smart things. In the device settings on the Classic app, you want to ensure that the scene control is turned on and this method can vary from switch to switch. Since we're going to use the button press events rather than turn the switch on and off, scene control is a must for this option. If you're trying to use a switch that does not support scene control, I suggest you go out and buy a new switch. The next thing you'll want to disable is the internal relay. Again, this varies from switch to switch. With Zoos, this is achieved by switching the load control setting to disable local control. Save those settings and you're off to the races. Oh, and it's always a good idea to make sure that you have the latest firmware and device drivers when trying any of these instructions. To move forward, you'll need the Smart Lighting app, which is found under Smart Apps on the Automation tab. Click Add a Smart App, then Smart Things Recommends, and the Smart Lights app should be at the top. And no, I don't know why it's called Smart Lights when you install it and Smart Lighting when you use it. Here's an address you can send your complaints to. No, 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 do not send anything to that address, please. Go like and peach you or something. Now there's no special setup for the primary switch, which is the Zen 21 in my case. So let's move on to the secondary switch, which is my Zen 26. Now setting up control is configured thusly, um, thisly. Uh, never mind, it's configured like this. In your smart lighting app, you'll create two new lighting automations. First, I want to control the Lab Zoos 21 box one and the what to do is turn on the switch. The trigger will be a button pressed event and the button is the Zoos Zen 26. And now we're going to use button one, which is the single tap up on that Zoos Zen 26.
The second automation will also control the Lab Zoos 21 Box 1, and the what to do is turn off the switch. The trigger will again be button pressed event, and the button is the Zoo Zen 26, and this time we're going to use button 2, which is the single tap down on that Zen 26. As you can see here, on off works very fast from the primary switch. There's no issues there. And it works from the secondary switch. It's just a little slower, but it's not too bad. And that's option one with the on off switch. Now, what do you do if you can't disable that internal relay you ask? Here's option two. And since we're pretending that this switch doesn't actually support scenes and or disabling the internal relay, let me turn off those settings that we just did real quick. This option is going to use the mirror capability in the Smart Lighting app. To mirror the switch, set up an automation to control the primary switch, again, my Zen 21. This time, what to do is mirror behavior. And set it to mirror your remote switch, again, in my case, this is the Zen 26. So far, this is great. I can turn the primary switch on and off from the remote switch. <laughs> what could go wrong? But there is this drawback. It's super easy for the switches to get out of sync. To get around this, you'll need to train yourself to always tap the remote switch to whatever the light state is. If the light is on, tap on first, then off. If the light is off, tap off first, then on. I really do not like this option, but it will work. I tried a few things to get around this. First, I set up two-way mirroring. I was thinking that whichever switch was controlling the light would inform the other switch and I'd be in business. Yeah, here, here's how that went. It was not a pretty situation. So if you must use the solution, you'll need to endure a bit of out of sync stuff on the switch. But then again, your mileage may vary and it is your marriage. Okay, enough of on off, let's get into the dimmers. Now, if you wanna control the dimming from both switches, meaning the remote switch can also do the dimming, really the only way you're gonna be able to do this if you want ramping off that remote switch is you're gonna to have to have a dimmer in both locations. And the only way to achieve that is with mirroring, which we just set up under that option two for the on off switches. Now, all the same problems apply with mirroring in that your switches are gonna get out of sync. I'm gonna suggest something different and it's gonna make dimming work a little differently, but I think you'll like this a lot better. I'm going to use two Zen 27 dimmers for this configuration. Now, if you only want to control on and off from the secondary switch, this is set up identically to the on off setup using the secondary switch as a scene controller. This won't give you dimming, but it will give you scene control or multi-tap capabilities. And check this out. First, make sure the second switch is properly set for scene control. From device settings, turn on scene control and turn off local control, blah, blah, blah. Now in SmartThings, we are going to automate the on off. And that gives us on and off control and on is to the previous brightness level. Next, I'm going to set up a double tap to set the dimmer to full bright. To test this, we'll set the level to dim and then turn the switch to off. And you basically get the idea from here. You can also use triple tap to set up a different level of brightness. Say you can take it to 75% or you can do a quadruple tap if you wanted to. So you could do 25, 50, 75, and 100%. Set it up however you want to. That's the beauty of using these scene control switches. Let's talk about mirroring. Mirroring works the same way as it did in the on off switch and it led to the same problems. If you're wondering what the two-way mirroring looks like with both dimmers, then check this out. It's a wild ride. Sometimes it sorts itself out and other times it doesn't. This behavior may vary based on which switch you're using, what the firmware is doing, and what that device driver is doing, but I find that this just ramps up and down until it settles into something comfortable. So use this with caution and you might want to see if it works for you. But I recommend sticking with scene control because I think that's a safer bet. And if you're wondering, hey John, can I use a smart on off switch to control a dimmer? Well, you're in luck. The answer is yes. And since I recommend using scene control, your best bet is to do this, do it this way anyway. 
just set up the on off switch with the same multi tap features that you use for the secondary dimmer and you're all set. I hope that helped you out. Until next time, cheers.